people expect others to do their part. It's normal. If some people are working and other people are just living off them, it seems unfair. Why should I have to work if they don't? Our dislike of free riders has led in modern times to the unfortunate phrase, contribute to society. While I appreciate the sentiment, its implications are lost in propaganda. You know it's a propaganda phrase because on the surface it's vague and uncontroversial, but something more is being implied. When people say you should contribute, they nearly always mean getting a job. But not all jobs contribute something. A lot of them are highly detrimental to society, let alone the environment. Instead of questioning the idea of a contribution, we blame the poorest people for having the gall to exist without formal employment. This video aims to reverse that. When we say contribute to society, so often we're not actually talking about society. Most jobs give the illusion of a service, but are only necessary because of the problems the system creates. Look at accounting, or marketing and advertising, HR, finance. They're part of something made absolutely necessary by the capitalist system. They only exist to solve problems that the system makes them solve. They're not inherently useful. They're just part of the enormous waste of human energy and ability that this system produces every day. Their jobs are not to serve you and me. Their jobs are to serve a corporation that you and I don't own. We don't get the benefit. We have to pay for it. Police, judges, prison guards, and border patrol don't contribute to society. They take people out of society. They destroy civil society by imposing the state's laws and punishments on it, instead of letting people govern themselves. States love to confuse language, so a judge will say you're going to jail to pay your debt to society, to pretend that the rule of the state is synonymous with society. The state is not society, as I explained two weeks ago. It has a parasitic relationship with society. We work, they force us to work, and live off the surplus. A lot of states are colonialists and imperialists, too, which means they subjugate native people around the world, take their land, and destroy their culture. Talk about personal responsibility all you like, the systems we're forced into put huge cons constraints on people that they can't just responsibility their way out of. And you might have noticed it's always the poor who get accused of not contributing, never the rich. Regardless of how many boats and jets and mansions they have and what they do with them, because they have money, and money legitimizes everything. While this system isn't society, it has enormous effects on society, like creating poverty and oppression. Influenced as we are by its propaganda, we come out with things like, everyone has to make a contribution to society. If this is society, then I gotta agree with Malcolm X, who said, I have no mercy or compassion in me for a society that will crush people and then penalize them for not being able to stand up under the weight. That's why I'm opposed to paying taxes. Paying tax is usually wrapped up in the idea of contributing. It shouldn't be. First, there's nothing voluntary about it, so it's hardly a good deed. If you work or buy anything legally, you have to pay taxes. If you like taxes so much, you should pay them on your gambling winnings and garage sale purchases. It's the law, after all. But I don't think you should. Have you seen what the state does with that money? War, cops, prisons, the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, and so on? Those are its core functions. You want it to do more of those things? If you do, you need this channel.
So hit subscribe. Same with if you believe if the state had more money, it would put that money toward health care and other social programs. That's not how states work. And however much you tax the rich, they'll get it all back in the form of contracts. Mutual aid could actually solve a lot of the problems government programs claim to solve. Then you would be building a civil society which the state has all but destroyed over the past few centuries, helping others directly rather than hoping the system will do it. The saddest thing to me is when someone believes in paying taxes but objects when some of their money goes to poor people. Apparently these people are fine with the day-to-day -day robbery and repression and violence of the state, but using your money to help people is unacceptable. They care about how hard-working the people on welfare are, but never object to lining the pockets of arms manufacturers or paying the salaries and pensions of killer cops. They use rhetoric like, They're abusing the system. Oh, I thought they were just taking money that was offered to them. Which, of course, huge corporations would never do. No one is abusing the system. They're using it the way it was designed. Watch the political language you use. You might be hating on the most oppressed people. But even if you're still okay with paying taxes, when you work, you're also making a few other people richer. A few people who already have enough money to end poverty and probably solve a lot of your financial problems, and every day choose not to. They put more money into political campaigns instead and strengthen their control of the system. Not only is the gap between rich and poor wider than ever, by no coincidence, we're also at the largest disconnect between productivity and wages ever. Employees are producing more than ever, but are getting paid about the same. Again, most of us have no choice but to work for rich people, but it only contributes to society if society means bosses and shareholders and landlords. People just don't want to work, I hear small business owners complain. Well, can you blame them? They spend most of their time working or commuting, their jobs are difficult, pointless, and unrewarding, all they do is make bosses and investors and landlords and politicians richer, and what's left over for them is just enough to survive. I personally think stealing from a corporation is better than working for it. I would go so far as to say, even the people working in a store aren't contributing to society. You would think they are because they're providing a service, but their jobs only exist because those things they're selling are not free. They're not giving you things, they're guarding things. The service is only to the corporation, which in turn serves its owners. So when they say you can have that for $10, what they mean is you can only have it if you pay. If you don't have money, you leave empty-handed. That's what it means to have rights. You have the right to something to the extent you can afford it, and you aren't turned away for some other reason. If you work at a store, you aren't contributing, you're limiting what people can have. Now, it's not your fault. You didn't write the job description. It's how the system works. We don't have a lot of choices. And I bet you'd be able to make a real contribution that you could be proud of if you weren't stuck in a room for 9 or 10 hours every day and then too tired in the evening to do anything. To make more than a, a, the tiniest contribution in a capitalist system is really difficult. A class society like ours robs most people of the opportunity to do what they really want or to, to do what's necessary by taking all their time and energy and gives the opportunities to the owners of the system. And even if everyone does make their contribution to the extent they can, if they're still only working within this system, they're not going to change it, but reinforce it. And the same problems will persist. Please 
please do not believe this nonsense going around about how everyone has to change themselves and then things will get better. That is not how it works. That is terrible advice. The system is not everyone together as an individual. It's a bunch of external forces acting on the individual. Personal responsibility can only take you so far. You need to oppose the system itself as a whole. And to do that, you need to understand it. Some people think because they worked hard, others should have to work hard too if they want to enjoy the same benefits, like surviving. But why would you want others to suffer just because you did? Why would you impose the ruling class's hard work ethos on other people just because you've been duped? There will always be some kind of work to do, but under capitalism, your work has to serve the owners of the corporation, which means more important work gets neglected. I can't take care of my kids or my parents. I have to go to work. I can't make the contribution I want to make, I have to go out and make the rich richer. They have decided for everyone else what it means to contribute. And when you work for someone else, the work never really ends. So jobs aren't going to get easier as more gets automated. Unless, of course, the workers are in control of the work and what it produces. As Buckminster Fuller said in 1970, we must do away with the absolutely specious notion that everybody has to earn a living. It's a fact today that one in 10,000 of us can make a technological breakthrough capable of supporting all the rest. The youth of today are absolutely right in recognizing this nonsense of earning a living. We keep inventing jobs because of this false idea that everybody has to be employed at some kind of drudgery because, according to Malthusian Darwinian theory, he must justify his right to exist. So we have inspectors of inspectors and people making instruments for inspectors to inspect inspectors. The true business of people should be to go back to school and think about whatever it was they were thinking about before somebody came along and told them they had to earn a living. I agree, and I would add a couple of reasons to why I don't like the idea that everyone has to make a contribution. First, I think the assumption is pretty ableist, because it rarely accounts for people with disabilities or mental health problems. Not everybody can work. Some jobs have always expected people to risk their lives, but now way more jobs do, as anyone dealing with the public has the chance of catching and spreading COVID. Some people are at much greater risk of infection or death, but they're still expected to contribute in some way that can be measured in dollars. Women and non-men have historically performed unpaid labor their whole lives, but they'll only be contributing by our narrow definition, if they're supporting breadwinners. Then there are people who can't find a job, perhaps because they face a stigma for being who they are, like their race, religion, gender, body type, criminal record, nationality, physical disability, mental disability. There's a lot of stigma out there, actually. What if you're just bad at interviews or bad at concentrating? Lots of immigrants and refugees can't work legally. And we're all subject to the rule that there just aren't enough jobs to go around. We have this idea that everyone has to have a job, but the propaganda fails to mention that in a capitalist system, that's impossible. Unemployment, poverty, unpaid work are all advantageous to the ruling class, so they are features of the system. Features not bugs. But if you don't have a job, you might get called a worthless parasite by someone who doesn't understand how the system works. How would you feel if you couldn't work and someone talks to you about contributing to society? They're implying you're a sponge, a net taker from society, and somehow of less worth to the world. But in a world of such abundance yet such stark inequality, I don't care about poor free riders. 
The real parasites are the richest people. Rich people don't have to work, so even if they do, it's just a hobby. They control corporations, they control land, they control the government. They make most of their money just by owning. That's it. They didn't have to contribute anything in order to get that money. They just had to own things. To the owners of a store, its employees are making a contribution. Owners live off the contributions of millions of other people. You make it, they take it. Yet, outside leftist circles, I never hear anyone telling it this way. The wealthy are considered to have contributed exponentially more than we have. Having money has nothing to do with how much of a contribution you've made, but we assume precisely the opposite. We measure people by the numbers in their bank accounts. So if you're poor, you're garbage. And if you're Elon, you must be brilliant and deserve every penny. We cage or shoot at poor people for stealing sneakers, but not Nike for paying its workers like shit, because the former is illegal and the latter is not. But who makes the law? The same people who came up with phrases like work ethic and paying your fair share. The rich make laws in their own interest. So maybe working and paying taxes and adhering to the law and waiting for the system to fix itself is contributing to the problem in society, not to its benefit. I think someone sitting on their ass Living off welfare is making a bigger relative contribution than about half the people we think of as contributing to society. They're not making the rich richer. They're doing much less to fund the violence of the state. They're harming the environment less even than people who just drive to work. Some of them will use their time to make a different kind of contribution, one not recognized in the GDP. And some won't, and either way is fine. So when you say everyone should contribute to society, make sure you don't mean the poor should get back to working for the rest of us. 